back to my channel this week and welcome to the new subscribers I received. I appreciate you guys and I hope you'll get comfortable and stay a little while. Um, for those of you that haven't subscribed to my channel yet, go ahead and press that subscribe button and give my video a thumbs up and of course share my videos um, on whatever platform you can because we definitely don't know what the next person is going through and so one of these videos might help a friend or a family member or someone that is struggling in silence that you don't even know about so if you enjoy my video and you feel like they're educational or they might be helpful to not only you but other people definitely share them but I'll go ahead and get into the video um, today I'm going to do two videos actually um, so it depends on which one you watch first or if you watch one over the other but um, so I'm gonna do a video on three ways to get out of a fornation ship and then I'm also this video is going to be on two ways that you can avoid a phrenation ship altogether. Um, I did a video on phrenation ships, uh, which has a good amount of views. It almost has like 300 views or so right now, and I'm a small YouTube channel, so that sounds like nothing, but it's a big deal to me. <laughs> so anyway, so my phrenation ships video um, has a lot of views, and I realized that it's really, really long, and that was like some of the complaints that I got. Um, but at the same time, like I was in Biloxi when my boyfriend was at drill, and so I just was kind of discombobulated and kind of rambling. So doing a, another rambling video. But um, so this one is going to be shorter. Two ways on how to avoid a phrenation ship. And if you don't know what a phrenation ship is, it's a friendship and a relationship, but it's not a real relationship where you guys have DTR, define the relationship. You guys are walking together, full-blown relationship. You guys know where you stand with each other. That's my boyfriend, that's my girlfriend, that's my fiance, that's, you know, whatever. So um, that's what I have coined as a phrenation ship, <laughs> is just putting those two together. So if you find yourself in that limbo relationship, where you don't really know what you stand and you're constantly like, you know, what do I call him or what do I call her or how do I approach this or that? Like, should I call my boyfriend? Should I call her my girlfriend? Like if you're in that kind of a limbo, like you don't know where things are going, you haven't defined anything and it's been a substantial amount of time, then you're in a phrenation ship. So stay tuned. So I know that I might get some backlash from this, especially from, you know, men that uh, preach the complete opposite because some men are like, well, you shouldn't tell a guy what you want up front. But I'm like, I feel like the right guy and the guy that's looking for the same things as you will not be at all scared or threatened by you saying, you know, hey, this is what I'm looking for. Why wouldn't you have a conversation about what you're looking for up front? Like, who wants to be catching feelings and then all of a sudden, you know, they're like, oh, no, I didn't want a relationship. I thought we were just chilling. I thought we were just cool. I thought we were just hanging out. Like, I just want to keep everything loose. Like, I'm not looking for a committed relationship. Like, I just want to, you know, have fun. Like, aren't you sick of dudes that are like, I just want to have fun? Like, I was really sick of that. <laughs> I don't know about you guys. Like, I think that a good man, if you were to be like, first date, second date, you know, during your course of conversations, text messages or whatever, you know, you guys should have a conversation about what you're looking for and that should match up and line up. And um, if it doesn't, then that's a red flag. And I feel like you shouldn't even try to pursue a relationship with somebody that is already telling you that they don't want to be in a relationship. That's the quickest way to get your heart broken. It's just, I'm sorry, it's just dumb. And I've been there and I've done it. I've been dumb. I'm trying to tell you not to be dumb. <laughs> that's what this is completely about, is sharing my experiences and how I had to just see the light basically. Um, so do not get into any type of, and you know, our so women, like I know that we'll talk ourselves into certain things like, well, it's okay. Or he might change his mind or well, I'm not really looking for a relationship either. Yeah, you are. But you know, you kind of talk yourself into certain things so that you can justify, <laughs> you know, justify the means. Um, so you just have to be really careful. I mean, because then it's like, if you go into this relationship, relationship, whatever you want to say, if you go into it knowing that the person has already said that they're not looking for a relationship, or, or you get that guy that's like, well, I'm not looking for a relationship, but if one happens, then so be it. Oh my God. 
Another pet peeve of mine is that ambiguity is like, uh, why? Like, why? It's like, if you're not ready, you're not ready. Like, don't try to get me, you know, reeled in because you feel like, well, this is what she's looking for, so I'm gonna tell her whatever so that I can keep getting what I want. Like, that is just disgusting of human beings, women, men, whichever one, um, to just leave people on is just absolutely disgusting. Um, God's not gonna bless you for that. <laughs> Let me just throw that in there, just to convict you and get that, you know, like hot coal down your throat type feeling. But yeah, so back to this, definitely, you have to have that conversation if someone says that they you know are not looking for a relationship then you just be their friend or you just let go of them all together if you're not really invested because i just really truly honestly believe that when god sends you the one you guys are going to just line up you're going to click your your values your goals where you want to go and there is an exception to this you know with some people that do come around but it's like you can't expect somebody to come around if they come around great but those might be the same men that are like years down the line well i told you i wasn't ready anyway so you just got to be careful like even if they come around now what about five years from now where they're like cheating on you and they're telling you the reason is because they weren't ready to settle down in the first place but you forced them or you know you persuaded them or whatever so it's like just be very careful about what people are saying to you especially if they're being honest i mean if they're honestly telling you this is not what they're looking for respect that and move on <sighs> so lastly just to pull this together my number two as always the biblical godly proponent of my um, reason and rationale is that you need to be listening to god about your relationships you have to like there's just no way that you can feel like oh i want a good godly christian man and you're leaving god completely out of the picture like you're waiting for god to send you the one and you're praying day and night and you're crying and you're petitioning and you're begging you know why haven't you done this god why haven't you why haven't you when will you you know are you going to because it starts to get to that desperation point and then you know we start taking just anything um and i am telling you this from the bottom of my heart because i have been there so you definitely need to be checking in with god and checking in like i said you know previously with the person that you're dating my boyfriend probably cannot stand <laughs> how many times i check in with him because i'm just like I'm too old to be playing games. Don't waste my time, dude. Like, I have goals. You know, you're saying you have the same goals. We need to be taking steps to walk together and build these goals. Um, you know, we need to be teammates and we need to come together and we need to do what we need to do. Um, so anyways, <laughs> but yeah, I check with, I check in with him every few weeks, probably like, look, you're still all in type thing, but, um, not like in a crazy, like creepy way or anything like that. Just like, look, Hey, where are you at? Like, what are we doing? Like, where, where's your head at? You know? And you can do that without asking them that question directly too. Just, you know, be smart about your sneakiness. Um, so anyways, definitely listen to what God is telling you. Pray about every relationship you get into before you get into it. You know, pray and ask that God's going to send you the right person that you're going to be able to know and tell the difference because that's when things get really sticky too, is that when we just jump and do things and God was trying to get us out of them and we were like, no, I want to hang on to this and it wasn't the right person. It's like, you know, you just have to have the faith that is going to be worth the wait. And that's what I feel like I did. And I mean, me and my boyfriend, we're, we're doing great. I mean, I'm not a fortune teller. Um, but at the same time, like we're doing really good. We, we're getting to the end of his deployment. It's like, thank God, like, cause I'm just so ready for this experience to be over. Um, so, you know, you just have to believe that God is gonna steer you in the right direction. 
but you can't be still hooking yourself up and feel like God's leading you in the right direction. You can't go for the man that says, oh, I go to church on Easter Sunday, on Christmas Eve, on New Year's Eve, you know, like all those people that are not really walking the walk. Like you have to, and I, I know that it's tempting because you're like, oh, well, they have this and this and they check off all these things. And it's really tempting, but I mean, if you really do want a good godly Christian man that is going to treat you the way God wants him to treat you, then you're just going to have to wait a little bit longer to find that and be way more selective and wait until you start seeing signs that this is the person that God has sent for you. And I know that it's hard and I want to tell you that there's excuse me, a quicker fix, but there's just not. So um, I know that's really sad. It's not what anybody wants to hear, but um, I just, my prayer for you is that you will hold on and wait and get closer to God and in your closeness with him, he is going to send you that person and you're not going to have to feel like you hooked yourself up. It's almost like they're just going to come to you and it might be, you know, if you're an online dater, okay, maybe they might come to you that way. Um, it might be in the grocery store. It might be at church. It might be at the gas station. My sister met her husband at the gas station. Um, so, um, you never know. I mean, it, it, it's just going to happen. You're at a party, you're going to a conference, you're hanging out with your friends and you know not at a bar um not at a club i just i don't think so but you know whatever do what you want to do um but yeah so there's god's just going to bring that person to you there's just going to be a little bit of work a little bit of patience on your behalf um i know it's hard like i said um I'm, I'm telling my old self these same things and that's kind of how i got myself out of where i felt like i was in relationships so I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, again, please share it if you liked it and leave your comments. I wanna know what your thoughts are about Fernation chips and if you see yourself in one right now, what are you gonna do about it? Or if you're gonna let it go, how are you gonna let it go? That's actually gonna be my next video. So if you find yourself in a Fernation chip, it's gonna be three ways to get yourself out. So stay tuned for that. Give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you guys.